All right, in this video, we're going to cover M.1.3 out of the ATIT study manual for math. And what we want to do here is we want to put some rational numbers in order. Rational numbers can be uh, a decimal number as long as the decimal doesn't go on forever and there's no pattern. Uh, we can have rational numbers that are like mixed numbers, fractions, uh, things that are not rational are like the square root of 5. The square root of 5 is not a pretty number. Yeah, that decimal goes on forever. And, you know, uh, some calculators don't even have a square root button on it. But the square root of 5 is not a pretty number. It does have a long decimal and there is no pattern. So if you have an ugly decimal, no pattern, it's not rational. But all these numbers here are rational. We want to write these uh, numbers here in increasing order. Increasing means we want to go from smallest to biggest. And what I like to do without, when I'm messing with these numbers, I got some integers, I have some mixed numbers, and I have some decimals. I like to convert them all to decimals, and I like to think about money. Um, that's how I like to relate these here. So what I'm going to do with this one, I'm going to think of this as just negative $3. Let's think about money. Okay? Uh, negative 3 and 3 tenths. Well, think about what 3 tenths of a dollar is. 3 dimes out of 10 dimes is 30 cents. You can use a calculator for this as well, but negative 3 and 3 tenths is negative $3.30. And to uh, further show you that, we know the negative 3 is going to be our number on the left side of the decimal. 3 tenths, 3 divided by 10 is going to be 0.3, which we can change it to 0 0.30. Again, let's think about money. Now, 3 and 2 thirds is one of those weird decimals. Uh, 2 thirds is going to be 0.6666666. You could take 2 thirds. You could divide this thing, uh, doing some long division. And what you're going to end up getting is 0.6666666. And you don't have time to do all that on the T's test. You will run out of time if you try to do all paper, you know, pencil and paper work. But check it out 2 divided by 3, 2 thirds, is a bunch of sixes. That 7 on the end is only there because it's getting rounded. So if we just think of this as being money, all we really care about is the first two decimal places. This is roughly $3.67. If we round that 6 up to a 7, we get roughly $3.67. All right, now these here, these are already nice. This is negative $3.41. This is $3.20, not $3.02, and then $3.45. I like to think about money. Now if we want to put these things in increasing order, we want to go from smallest to biggest. Now, this is the smallest number. The reason why that's the smallest number, think about money. If you're negative $3.41, that means you're in the hole. You've overdrafted from your bank account. That's worse, not much, but that's worse than being negative $3.30. And that's worse than being negative $3. Smallest to biggest, the more negative your number is, the smaller it is. And that's the most negative number I have up there. So that's going to be our smallest one. Then the next one to it, going up a little bit, is negative $3.30. So I'm going to cross these out as I do them. And then we go to negative $3. Are we going to say negative three? I know I did write these. Uh, technically, we need to go back and refer to them as this because this is how you'll see your answers on the T's test. But nonetheless, I like to think about decimals. And then, you know, we're going from smallest to biggest. Now, when you're dealing with positive numbers, $3.20, definitely the smaller of these three that we have left. So $3.20 is going to be our next one. Uh, $3.45 is going to be our next to the biggest. And then our biggest number up here is 3.67. These are those numbers written in increasing order. Now, obviously, we do want to match them up to where we say, like, okay, the negative 3 is really that one. Uh, what else do we got? The negative $3.30 that I said right there, that's really that one right there. 3 and 2 thirds, 3 and 2 thirds, that's the $3.67. You know, I just want to make sure I'm relating these decimals back to their original form. It's really the same thing, but, you know, again, I like to think about decimals when I'm converting things or ordering things, putting things in the correct order, smallest to biggest here. Be careful. You could easily see the word decreasing on the T's test. So what you want to do there is reverse this. Decreasing is going from biggest to smallest. And the mistake you don't want to make, they're going to try to fool you. The more negative your number is, the smaller it is. And then this last example here, how do the following three numbers compare to each other? When you compare numbers, we're saying, hey, which one's bigger, smaller, which one's in the middle since we have three numbers? Are any of them going to be the same? I don't know. Let's find out. 
4.21. Let's think about money. That's $4.21. Two ninths is one of those weird decimals yet again. So four point four and two ninths is going to be four point two 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 divided by nine. Two ninths. Two divided by nine is a bunch of twos. Let's just think four dollars and twenty two cents. Again, that's an approximation. I, sh I should have mentioned that up here too. The three dollars and sixty seven cents that we got right here. That's an approximation, but it's close enough, and I'm going to be happy with this because I know now. Since this is roughly $4.22, that's going to be bigger than $4.21, right? And then this last one right here, four and one-fifth, what is that? What's a fifth of a dollar? Think about money. A fifth of a dollar is 20 cents. And to show you that further, one-fifth, if I take one, divide five, this is not two cents. This is 0.2, and then you can put a zero there. So that's 20 cents. So let's think of this as being $4.20. And they're going to put these numbers that are close together like that, so you just can't, it, the answer is not as obvious. I like to think about money, convert your numbers to decimals. Now, how do these things compare to each other? You may see something like this. We can say $4.20 is less than, less than, that's how you write it that way, $4.21, yeah, $4.20 is less than $4.21, and that is less than the $4.22. But again, relating this back to the actual original numbers, the original forms that we were given, we definitely want to make sure we just, I'm just going to mention it here. I know I highlighted them up here, but four and a fifth is less than 4.21. Well, I can leave that alone because that's how it was originally given to me. And then that's going to be less than four and two ninths. So four and two ninths is actually the biggest number we have up here, um, $4.22. So, yeah, you know, ordering numbers, I wanted to make sure we covered some decimals, some mixed numbers. Uh, you could convert these things to improper fractions and get common denominators, but nah. I think the way you should tackle these problems on the T's test is to convert these things to decimals and then think about money. And that's how you can compare the things. Also, you might want to review back over some greater than, less than symbol stuff to make sure you're comfortable with that. But yeah, there you have it. That's two examples of putting rational numbers in the correct order for the... Uh, T's math test. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped.